Melvin, yeah. this week, talk a little bit about Russell Westbrook. On Monday night, Russell Westbrook broke Wilt Chamberlain's all-time consecutive triple-double record with his 10th consecutive triple-double. Um, I feel like a lot of people overlook Westbrook in this capacity. We're talking about a guy who is in his third season where it looks like he's going to average a triple-double yeah. for the third year in a row. Yeah. Before he did it two years ago, we thought that would never happen again. We thought that was Oscar Robinson back when our parents, grandparents watched the NBA. Right. Russell's doing it at a crazy clip now. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's very impressive. And um, I've always been a fan of his game. Like He's very athletic, and, and he's putting all those tools to use right now in the best way. Um, I think Paul George is really helping him like by taking some of the pressure off. And, uh, you know, you got a guy who can get a 47-point triple-double himself. Right. That helps, too. So, what do you think? Yeah, and that was a crazy thing about that game is that Paul George had a triple-double also. So, you had two players on the same team that got triple-doubles. And I believe that Paul George hit the shot that gave Westbrook his last assist. And Westbrook hit the shot that gave (laughs) George his uh, 10th assist. So, okay. Great teammate action, yeah. um, but I agree with you that Paul George has definitely stepped up this year. He's definitely helping Westbrook, and the thing about Westbrook this year, his scoring numbers are going down, mm-hmm. where he's averaging just over 20 points a game, right. but it seems like he's improving in every other aspect. So he's averaging over 11 rebounds, over 11 assists. Yeah. Do you think he's a better player this year, or do you think he's a worse player? I think better. Um he was in a situation where he had to take a lot of shots. It had to be, you know, physically a big task for him to play that way every night. And you get a player like PG that comes in and, you know, takes some of that workload off of him. Now he can be more efficient. Right. And and now, and last year when George came over there, it seemed like they were still working through some chemistry. Russ still wanted to be Russ and attack every right. time and shoot all the time. And now it seems like he's content to let Paul George shine, do his thing. That's why Paul George is now an MVP candidate. Um, But Westbrook, even though his shooting percentage is falling, he's taking better shots. He's taking less shots. And to me, he's more effective. But it's crazy that he's probably going to average a triple-double the third year in a row and is not even mentioned in the MVP conversation anymore. Yeah. um, I think it kind of – I don't want to say the novelty wore off. You know, it's like once you get to a certain level of uh, excellence from a person, it's easy to kind of ignore it after a while. Right. And I think he's going to suffer from that. Um, but, I mean, true basketball fans know what he's doing is very impressive. Yeah. I think we won't really appreciate Westbrook until he's retired. You right. know, when you look back and see this guy had, whatever, four or five seasons averaging triple doubles yeah. that nobody in this game has done before. Right. Um, I think we'll appreciate him then, but now he does get overlooked a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about a former teammate of Russell Westbrook's, none other than Kevin Durant, now with the Golden State Warriors. Right. I don't know if you saw here in the news, Kevin Durant kind of went off on the media a little bit, specifically Ethan Strauss of the Atlantic, Ethan Strauss of the Atlantic, and KD just really wasn't in the mood to talk to journalists. Now, this is something we've seen over and over since he's went to Golden State. Mm-hmm. He's been a little more whiny. He's been a little more <laughs> uh, against talking to the media. Right. What do you feel about that? Um, I see both sides of the coin. There are things that, you know, people want to get the inside scoop on. Um, but then, you know, some of the questions that they ask aren't necessarily – asked in the best place or time. Like, if you keep asking a a player about where they're going next season, like, that kind of disturbs where they're at right now. Like, I would be tired of it too. And he avoided uh, interviews for a while, and then people started getting on him about that. So he said, basically, I want to talk about basketball. Can we talk about playing basketball right now? Takes me back to Iverson. We're talking about practice. (laughs) Right. It's, it's kind of like I would get tired of those questions too, I think. But here's my problem with Durant when it comes to that. So I got two issues with it. Mm. So number one, you're making, what, like $31 million. True. Partially because of how the media hypes up the game for you. True. So that's something that the players have to do. You have to talk to the media. You have to do interviews. You have to make yourself available because that's the way that 
the NBA sells that package. That's how but you that get doesn't mean you have to necessarily like the questions that they ask. You don't. But if you don't like those questions, sign a longer contract. Kevin Durant keeps signing the one and one deals where he's a free agent every season. So it's only natural that people are going to ask you, what are you going to do in the offseason? If you don't like those questions, sign a five year deal. We're not even all, we're, we're only halfway through this season, though. Can we at least get to toward the end of the season before you start asking every every uh, post game interview? So uh, how about those Knicks? It's like, and then you get into situations where they ask a question, the player answers it honestly, and now you're talking about tampering and people uh, putting together super teams. Somebody in the media asked that question and they answered it honestly. So, like I said, I can see both sides though. Listen, Kevin Durant. If you just want to play basketball, <laughs> it's a bunch of YMCA's all around here where you can go play basketball. Nobody's going to ask you anything about who you got next. But if you want to play in the who NBA, you got next because I want to be on his team. If you want to play in the NBA, NBA, you're going to have to answer some questions about the media. <laughs> That's all there is to it. True. True. All right. And last thing I want to mention as we wrap up, I want to send a shout out to Eric Reed. Eric Reed just signed a three-year, I believe, twenty-two million dollar. Uh, extension with the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. For all of you who may not be familiar with Eric Reed, he was the first guy to take a knee by, besides Colin Kaepernick. He has a collusion grievance against the NFL. Mm -hmm. And actually this signing probably proves that it was true because he was a guy who wasn't in the NFL for like a year, former pro bowler, right. and now they showed him that bag. So shout out to Eric Reed. Yeah, good job, bro. So. Appreciate you all for tuning in. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you like the St. Louis American page. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for the notification squad. Uh, and visit us where, Melvin? www.stlamerican.com. Appreciate it. See you next week.